Hopefully this doesn't. Uh, if someone wants to record my stream, feel free as well. Just in case you want to back up in case this recording gets corrupted again. Uh, but I have recorded since and it was fine, so I'm not sure. Um, okay, so let me run through this quickly. Um, because I know you have that thing at four and I'd like you to have some time to get some food and stuff before then. Um, yeah, go ahead. So once you import, you have imported your sprite sheet. You'll have set it to multiple because there's multiple pieces in your sprite sheet. Um, you can set the pixels per unit to the size of the sprite sheet if you want to. Um, and then we go to the sprite editor. Obviously you apply after doing all that. So again, multiple because there's multiple pieces in the sprite sheet as we can see. Um, we do the, uh, excuse me. We can change the pixels per unit. And then we go to the sprite editor. Cool. In the sprite editor, um, what I did to slice up each piece was I sliced automatically. Um, and as long as you have each piece separated away from each other without like random bits of pieces away, um, you are should be able to like uh, hit automatic slice, and it should slice uh, each piece. Um, out by itself and you can rename them at this stage by just typing here if it doesn't slice for you you can manually set up a sprite by like literally clicking and dragging and you can create a sprite and you can name it there okay so basically what you want each is for each piece to be a, a sprite of its own great stuff all good so far we've all done this before now is the, the bit that's a bit weirder so we need to do something called a skinning um, and the skinning will affect how the sprite is uh, moved and animated. So we go to the sprite editor. We'll go to the skinning editor. Uh, oh, let's apply that. And when we're in the skinning editor, double clicking on any of the sprites will give me that sprite. So I, I know that I did, I skinned this and this and this. I skinned all of these, but I didn't skin any of these heads. So I'm going to skin one of these heads just to show you. So I'm going to skin that one. So you just literally double click, you get the orange outline, which means that's the one we're working on right now. Uh, scroll in to zoom in, middle mouse button to move. And let's look at that. Okay, so what we want to do, uh, this is a preview pose, so we're not doing anything here, it's previewing. But what we want to do is we want to create bones. Okay, so we create bones by just clicking create bone, and you see I have a little red dot. Um, it does, the color will change depending on the bone. Um, and wherever I click, that will be the origin point for that bone. So because I want the neck to rotate from this position, I'm going to make that the origin point. Gonna rotate, And I might stop it here because I want another bone to take control of this section of the hat and another bone to take that. So let's stop it here. Boop. And it automatically starts creating another bone. I can keep going up to here. So let's go up to the bend in the hat and it's going to keep going. Uh, I can even make one bone that's just for the bell. Let's do that. So this little bone here, just for the bell. And then right click to stop creating bones. So this whole section is uh, a whole line of bones, right? Now, I don't know if you remember, uh, but I all I also wanted, uh, this is recorded, so I'm just going to keep going, if that's all right. Um, I'm also going to have little sections come across here and here. So for the little floppy hat bit. So what I'm going to do is click on this bone. Because if I click on this bone, I'm going to create these new bones uh, as children of this bone. All right. So if I if I just made a bone here, that's a completely separate bone. So it's not childhood. Meaning if I move these, it, this doesn't necessarily move with. But I want it to be so that when I move the head, the other bones come with. So I click on this first. And you see I get this little transparent thing. So that's because it knows that 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 I'm going to create a bone linked to this bone. Let's make one here. Right click to stop making it. And I can continue making one here. Cool. And right click to stop. And right click to stop. Uh, what I can then do, so each of these bones are set up, I can go to edit bone to like edit each bone. So I can give it a name. So this can be like front of hat. This can be uh, 
Fuck off. Hot. Hot. Body, let's say. Hot. Body top. Let's do bell. Cool. So they're all edited, right? Job done. So the bones are there, but we haven't set up the what's called the, the skinning or the weighting, meaning like how much is each bone influence each area. So uh, we can test that. We go to preview pose. We can test whether that works. It doesn't work because we haven't edited that yet. Okay. Um, so the quickest way is we just do the um, auto geometry. Blue. Generate. Blue. And it's generated. Uh, we can go back to preview, and I can test that now. I'm like, oh, that works. Um, so now I can I can test whether each piece works, uh, which it more or less does. Let's see these. Okay, so there's a few that need to be edited, right? Like that's ridiculous. That shouldn't affect my face, for example. So now we need to edit these. No worries. Let's go down to the. Uh, we can do an auto weights, but let's do the weight slider. So let me go click on this bone. So I know this bone was affecting too much, right? What I can then do is, the quickest way to do it is I can just like reduce its weight. And if I reduce, see the way it's blue, the, f the area affected by the blue is reduced, meaning it's taken up by the other area. So it's gonna be affected more by the red. So I can test that much better. Kind of want that, that's pretty good. All right, let's do the same for the, I think this was the same. Yeah, it's affecting the ear, don't want that. Click on that. Weight slider reduce. So you can see the purple getting less. And as the purple gets less, the other bones kind of move in and take over. Still a bit much. Cool. Then the hat, maybe a little less as well. Oh, I'm still I'm picking the wrong bone. This one. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Does that kind of make sense what I'm doing? And I can even select specific uh, vertices. So if I click this vertex, I'm going to be like, okay, this is the, which one? This is hat body top, I think. So for this vertex, if I select that vertex again, just this one here, I'm like, uh, maybe don't be affected by the hat body top. So now if I move the hat body top, it doesn't mess around with that one at all. Well, actually, maybe a bit. Maybe you messed it a little bit with the hat body top. Okay. Okay, so I can individually click each vertex as well. Um, you do. You will notice, though, if I click each one, you see the way if I if I add more on this one, it reduces the other because they, they have to add up to one. So they always have to add up to one. It's shared influence between the two bones, okay? Okay, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I, I used that vertex and I was like adding it to the, to also use this bone and use more of that bone than the hot body top. So it doesn't affect that vertex as much because I didn't want it folding it in. So you can get really granular with this. You can get really detailed. Okay. Um, any questions so far? We go back to preview pose um, and then we just hit apply and that's applied. I have a question incoming. How did I get like literally auto geometry here? Once I had the bone set up, I just hit auto geometry and it basically like generates geometry based on the, the bones. Uh, again, this is recorded, so hopefully you should be able to see, uh, but that's fine. So we close that. Um, that was the, ooh, I forgot to name it. It was head, this one, head X. So let's bring that in. So I think some people are having problems with this last week. Where they brought it in and they're like, oh no, where's my bones? Let me move it off to the side here. Where are my bones? So to have the bones, you need to have the sprite skin on it. Okay, so let me grab that. Not sure why it doesn't automatically add it, but sure. Let's 
bright skin. And then just go create bones. And it just adds the bones that you already have. Um, and you see them working. As you skin them. So here's one I prepared earlier. Now what I did, let me turn off the head X here. If anyone remembers, is that I created an empty as the parent of the, like I, I set up the body first of all, and everything is going from the body. Um, the pelvis bone being the main bone that controls everything. Um, and then I childed everything else to the body. Um, and the reason for that is that I want the um, I want the pelvis to be able to control everything. So if I move the pelvis, everything moves with it, which is as it should be. If you think about an actual animation or an actual person, if I grab someone's pelvis, everything will come with. If I grab someone's leg, like you know, I might be able to pull it off, sort of thing. Um, it's just where everything is attached to. Pretty much everything is attached to the pelvis. Okie dokes. So let's go back here. So I had the, um, so once I set it up, body, everything childed to the body, or everything childed to the, it, the body is where the pelvis was, so everything was childed to the pelvis. Um, and then I created a parent, empty parent, and here I added the animator. And the animator is going to use a player controller animator. I just literally just right click, create animator controller, and I renamed it to be player controller. And I dragged that in there. And what the animator does is if I go to window and animation animator, it gives me the animator. And the animator window shows me all the animations related to this animator. Okay, so I drag that controller in there. Um, and then I made another empty above that and that's the player. So far we haven't done anything on the player. Nothing here. Has no code, no scripting, no nothing. Okay, uh, so far all it does is it just holds... Um, uh, it just holds out of it, but later uh, we might have to do maybe one class in Easter, and then we'll we'll we can skip one class when we get back from Easter, uh, just so you know how to do it. Because I feel like uh, it'd be important to know that because otherwise you're two weeks waiting till the the, the code bit. We were supposed to do it this week, but um, basically we'll sh we'll see how to add like collision, uh, how to add physics, so movement, how to add like uh, yeah like. Um, how to make this thing move and we'll also see how to like set it up so depending on what it's doing like depending on where I'm moving it'll play move animation or if I stop it'll play the idle animation if I jump it'll play jump animation okay so so far hopefully that's all okay um, the next step then is I'm going to be making sure I select the animator level uh, so I know that it's selecting this animator I can go to window animation and I do the animation so I have some animations in here already but let me set up a new one from scratch uh, if I don't have any usually there will be a button here that says uh, to create an animation um, you need to make an animation clip and you would just click that um, yeah so just I already have animations that's why they show up here but usually there will be a button saying um, to create animation uh, click here to create an animation clip or I can just go here and create a new clip okay so I'm just gonna make a test one so I'm gonna do a test run cycle because that's to be the easiest one no, sorry the, the the most complex one to do so player underscore test run and you see it show up in the controller already it's already here so every time I make a new animation it automatically shows up in the controller all right, so again, making sure I select my animator, making sure I hit red keyframe, uh, sorry, red recording button. If I don't hit this, it does not record, so I need to hit this. Okie doke. So uh, I'm going to do a run cycle. 
So let me set the character on the first frame. I always want to set the first frame to be, it's going to loop. I always want to set the first frame to be what the last frame will be. It's always going to be the same. Um, so let me set this into like, you know, I'm in the middle of a run. Okay, looks. So I might have like, maybe a right foot forwards. Um, it's just about to hit the ground. Uh, to me, I find this the easiest way to do things. So it's just about to hit the ground. And my left foot is maybe like, kind of like pulling back, doing that. Uh, maybe my. Should I move that? Should I rotate it? Let's see. Maybe I'll rotate it. Nah, let's move it. I prefer it moved. So it moved up there. Um, let's do a little, a little bit of a chest rotation, but not much. If my right foot is forward, that means my right arm is going to be backwards. Always, always the opposite. And that means my left arm is going to be forward. Head probably up because I haven't hit the ground yet. And then maybe the hat like up and like that. Because I'm about to hit the ground, so let me have the hat. Okay, so uh, I should have a reference here actually um, to know where my floor is, but that's my first frame. Done. Uh, let me do a middle frame. Uh, I think we did 40 frames the last time, but let's see. Um, I'm going to do the middle frame. So the middle frame is where I swap them. That goes here. That goes here. That's back. And this is forward. Forward. And I can even move them as well little so it's almost as if the hips are rotating I'm simulating rotating hips by moving them right so otherwise they would just run from the back here it's a bit weird let's move this one here oops I missed that one goes So we've got a rotation problem. I probably need to set a rotation keyframe here first and then go back there. And that should hopefully give me less errors for rotation. Ah, dang it. Sometimes I need to zoom in. Right, let's see if that, yeah, that's much better. Okay, cool. Uh, then the arms do the opposite. So this arm goes back and then this arm goes forward. And everything else more or less stays the same. So we can copy the chest and copy the head. I'm holding control to select multiple things, by the way. Control C, control V, so that's just copied. Cool. Then I just need to click the top diamond to copy everything and paste it at the end. So then I get this. It's terrible, but it's a basic run. And it's terrible because it has no weight. So we talked about that. Um, let's look at it. I always like to look at it small as well so I can see uh, what it's doing. You see like the whole body has no motion. It's like just, that's terrible. Um, so this is where we start to add weight and we'll start to make it more believable. So in about in between, a little bit, maybe in between, um, let's tweak that. So we have the right leg forward and that should be impacting the ground. When it impacts the ground, it needs to scrunch up. I could probably get the pelvis to drop down a bit. This scrunches up a little. This pulls up. Oops, that. So you see that, even that little bit already adds such a big difference. Let's see that in big. You see like a little, that tiny little drop so small but it makes a big difference um, and then let's do like a little chest bump forward maybe the head goes forward as well uh, maybe the hat flops down so we're we're selling the impact hat flops down let's do oof 
much better hit, right? Maybe the head could go down a bit. Like maybe you'll move the head down. Yeah, much better. So you can see it on the right hand side, the little tiny um, character. This is with the weight hit. Oops, sorry, there was a bit of lag there. This is with the weight hit, this is without. And without you can see it's just so... Okay, I'm just um, sliding in the air, but with, it's like a full actual impact, right? And we haven't even done any separations yet. Okay, cool. Uh, so most of the stuff can be copied. Uh, I can't copy the leg stuff, but I can copy pretty much everything else. Um, and copy it to... Do, 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 do. Yeah, I can't do any of the leg stuff, so that's fine. But everything else can be copy-pasted here. Oops, I didn't copy paste. Control C, Control V. There we go. So now we got the we got the hat and the head and all the chest motion. Do I get the pelvis position? I didn't. Yes, I do. But I don't get the legs. So, because they're, they're obviously opposite legs, so I can't. So great stuff. Now I'm going to deal with that leg. This leg here. Let's move that here a bit. Give me the rotation, please. That should rotate. So it's squishing under under the impact. And this leg, meanwhile, is kind of like passing by. Much better. Okay. Let's have a look at that. Ooh, I don't get... Uh, the pelvis didn't go back up here, I think. Pelvis, yeah. It's missing a position keyframe, so I need to copy that from the start. And at the end as well. So it should go down and up again. Cool. So you can hopefully see on the right, it's much better. I think I'm missing a head one as well. Yeah, head position here is missing from the both there. There we go. Okay. So now, um, does anyone remember what I need to do as well? Or what the problem is with this animation. Like it's fine, it's serviceable, uh, but everything happens on one frame. So everything is like this frame, then this frame, then that frame, then this frame, then that frame. So there's no like what we call overlap, right? And overlap is good because overlap makes it feel a little uh, more organic. Things don't all happen at the same time. So all I need to do is just grab like, I'm just grabbing these here just overlapping them so they happen at slightly different times. It's only a small thing. Um, let's leave the legs where they are. So now you can see like the head and the hat and everything moves slightly differently. Um, so it's very subtle, but it makes a big difference in how it feels. Okay, so it feels a lot more natural now. Um, it's very subtle, you may not notice it. But it's easy to do, so you should do it. And... Yeah, there we go. Cool, so that is a full run cycle sorted. Okay, um, let me just pause the, anim the recording here. So the impact animation... Literally, is just... I'm impacting the ground. One frame. The reason is we'll transition to it in code. We're using the animator really. We're not, we're, we don't have to set up the whole animation. We're going to make it go from the falling to this one frame of impact. Yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Like a filler image is a good example. Uh, 
and wonder, I wonder, could we change the sprite? Let's see if we can. To the X sprite. Can I do that? Okay. Does that break everything? I don't know if it does. So I've lost I've lost all the bones now, so I don't know if that was a good thing to do. Let's find out. So I have that set up. So let me find out in the animator. So let me go from idle, transition to run, transition to fall. Uh, well, why am I doing all those transitions? Let's just go from idle to fall to impact. And then from impact back to idle. I just want to see whether this works. So you see that? The way there's a one pa one frame of impact, it literally just plays that one frame and it goes back to idle. So we will set this up basically so it goes it goes uh it, it runs through that when that happens. Okay. Alright, so let me pause so I can answer these questions.